Hi, Larry Alterman here, and today I'm going to be talking about fans, fan speed, and fan noise. So, the problem is that a lot of times electric fans, even in their lowest speed, are quite powerful and quite noisy. Like this fan here is at its lowest speed, and as you can see, it's quite powerful and quite noisy. And this is probably okay most of the time, but sometimes maybe you want a quiet dinner, you want to talk, or you're in a recording studio, or you want to watch a movie, and you don't want the fan to be so powerful and noisy. Is there a way to slow the fan down and make it less quiet? Is there a way to do this effectively and cheaply? And the answer is yes. Most of the time it can be done. So in this video, I'm going to explore how you can do that. So let's get going. So why do I say that most of the time the answer is yes, we can slow down the fan and reduce the noise? Why don't I say all the time? Well, that's because all fans have a motor, and there's a million different kinds of motors. And so what works for one fan with one particular kind of motor may not necessarily or always work with another fan with a different kind of motor. However, that being said, most household fans have a similar motor, namely an asynchronous AC induction motor. And so the technique that I'm going to show you in this video will work for most household fans, but not necessarily all household fans. Okay, so what can we do to slow our fan down and make it more quiet? We want to both slow it down and make it more quiet. Well, there's basically three ideas that we could try, and I'll go over all three ideas. And, the, and here are the three ideas. The first is to lower the frequency of the current. Uh, normal current is 60 cycles per second. If we lower the frequency, maybe that will slow the fan down. The, other, the second method is to chop up the current. We can do this with a standard dimmer control. And the third way is to lower the voltage. So let's talk about all these three possibilities. Okay, the first idea I have for reducing the speed of the fan is to reduce the number of cycles per second, the frequency. So this uh, graph represents a normal AC wave, 60 cycles per second. Theoretically, we could reduce the frequency like this. So instead of being 60 cycles per second, it might only be 40 cycles a second. Instead of this, it becomes this. So the question is, will this slow down the fan? And it would work if we had a synchronous motor. A synchronous motor is a motor that's tied to the frequency of the current. And many motors are synchronous, but most household fan motors are not synchronous. They're asynchronous. So this method would not work. Even if we did have a synchronous motor, we would still have to buy an inverter driver so that we could vary the frequency, and this would be more expensive than the fan itself. For these reasons, this idea is officially rejected. The second method I want to explore is to use a dimmer control to slow down the fan and make it more quiet. And this actually can be done to an extent. There's even videos about this. Here's a YouTube video, which I took the, uh, the thumbnail of and I put it here. And this will say that you can use a dimmer control to slow down a fan. Well, you can use a dimmer control to slow down a fan, but I don't recommend this method. Why is that? because it will slow down the fan, but it will typically not make it more quiet. There'll be an annoying buzz or hum. Why is this? Because we have to dis because of the way a dimmer switch works. So here's an, a normal uh, AC current wave. Now what a dimmer control does is it actually chops up the wave. It, it's like a switch and it turns off the current for a short amount of time. In this example, we've turned off the current for the first fourth of each cycle. If we turn the dimmer control to a higher level, it will cut off more of the cycle. And if we do it even more, it will cut off more of the cycle. So if you look at the waveform, what happens is the, is the uh, waves jump from like zero volts down to uh, a big negative voltage number, and then they go to back to zero, and they jump up high. So there's a, the waveform is not smooth. And because of this, there'll be a, uh, a hum, a buzz, and so even though it will slow down the fan, it will not make the fan more quiet. I have a video to demonstrate this. Here's the video. Okay, so here I have a dimmer control, and I'm gonna affect the speed of the fan with the dimmer control. So I turn it on, and as you can see, it works. It slows it down, I can go very slow, or I can go full speed. But the problem is that the dimmer control makes a, a hum, a 
a bad noise as we talked about. So here you can listen to the, the sound of the dimmer control. That's the problem with the dimmer control. It will slow the fan down, but at the same time, it will create this noisy hum or buzz. Okay, so because of the hum or buzz that's introduced with a dimmer control, I hereby reject this method. Okay, so the third way to make a fan go more slow and reduce the noise is to reduce the voltage going into the fan. And this is the method which I think is the best method by far, and it works very well. It both slows the fan down and makes it very quiet. And this is because the waveform stays very smooth. So here's an example of the original waveform. And when we reduce the voltage, the waveform is still very smooth. It has the same number of cycles per second, but the amplitude of the wave is reduced, meaning that there's not as much energy in the electricity, so the fan will go slower. And this method is very good. So the question then becomes, how do we do this? Okay, before actually going into the methods of how to reduce voltage, I want to dispel some myths. I want to say that from personal experience and testing, I can tell you that lowering the voltage will both effectively slow down the fan and make it more quiet without any buzzing, and it will not reduce the longevity of the fan. This is, of course, for asynchronous AC induction motors, which most fans are. So there's a myth going around the internet that says lower voltage will burn out the fan. This is a myth. This is not true. And I can prove it. I'll show you that in a second. The other myth is that lower voltage will actually use more electricity. Well, if you know anything about the Ohm's law equations, you know this is not true because the amount of electricity used, the watts, is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. The resistance is the same. It's the same fan. The volts is less. Therefore, it has to use less electricity. And to show you that, to prove to you that it doesn't actually burn out the fan, I actually have a fan that I've been using for two years straight on half voltage, 50% voltage. So let me show you a little video of this fan. Okay, so I want to show you this little setup that I have here. Here I have a fan that's normally 220 volts. And here I have a little step-down transformer, which makes it from 220 to 110. So I have this fan that's normally 220 plugged into this 110, 110 transformer. And it's cooling this uh, UPS that I have. Now this UPS had its own fan, but it was very noisy, so I disabled it and put this fan here. And I reduced it to 110 volts so it would be quiet. And as you can see, it's very quiet. And I've been using this fan for two years straight. It has not burned down. It has not burned out. So that dispels the myth that if you plug a fan into lower voltage, it will burn out. Okay, so now that we've established that we want to lower the voltage going into the fan, the question is, how do we do it? And there's two ways. One is to use a manual voltage regulator, namely a variable transformer. And the other is to use a resistive load. So let's talk about these two methods now. Okay, so the first way I'm going to talk about to lower the voltage is to buy a voltage regulator, a manual variable voltage regulator or variable transformer. And this method will work very nicely, assuming you get the right kind of transformer. Now you need a transformer, the old style transformer with real copper coils inside. Nowadays they have some electronic versions which uh, try to imitate a real transformer, but the waveforms they produce are not real sine waves. So uh, you, don't, you don't want one of these like newfangled kind of uh, voltage regulators. You want an old fashioned voltage regulator which has the copper coils inside and this will work very well. But the problem is that this costs about a hundred bucks and your fan probably only costs 50 bucks or something. So this is going to cost like double the price of your fan. So even though this method will work well and if you do have a variable voltage regulator you can hook it up to your fan because of the cost of this method I realize that most people will want, not want to buy a variable voltage regulator to control their fan. Okay, so the second way to lower the voltage to the fan is to put a resistor in line with the fan, in line with the, uh, not parallel, but in line with the current going to the fan. 
And if we put a resistor in here, that will effectively lower the voltage to the fan and the fan will go slower. Well, there's several problems with this. First of all, it can't just be a plain resistor. It has to be, uh, it has to be the, the, the right resistance. We have to be able to vary the resistance to get the right speed that we want. And the second problem is the resistor has to be capable of uh, carrying the right amount of amperage or current. If it's a small resistor, it will burn out. And so uh, we need the right kind of resistor. Now the other problem with this kind of setup is that it actually wastes some energy because some of the energy is lost here in this resistor. The resistor will heat up and so some energy is lost. And you could argue that the uh, this method is inefficient. And in a sense that's true, but it's still more efficient than just using the fan itself. Because if you just use the fan itself at full speed, it will use a certain amount of current. But if you put the resistor in here, the fan will use less electricity. The resistor will use more electricity. It will waste some electricity here. But the amount of electricity that you save here is always going to be more than the amount of electricity that you waste here. And we know this because of Ohm's law, which says the watts is equal to the voltage squared, the voltage being 220 at the source divided by the resistance. And the resistance of a resistor plus the fan is more than the resistance of just the fan. So it's going to slow down the fan. The fan will use less energy. The resistor will waste some energy, but the total system will use less electricity than just the fan itself. And this resistive load will produce a nice smooth sound wave, which will lower the speed of the fan without causing any buzz or noise. So the question then becomes, how do we find the correct resistor? Well, that could be hard if you went to, the, to a store and you were looking for the right resistor and you had to figure it all out. But fortunately, we have a shortcut. We just happen to know that light bulbs work very well. For a standard house fan with a typical wattage of anywhere from 50 to 100 watts, light bulbs will make a very effective resistive load. So let's explore this further. Okay, uh, before I go on, I want to make one thing clear. When I say light bulbs, I don't mean just, I don't mean fluorescent or LED light bulbs. They have to be the old fashioned kind of light bulbs, the one with the filaments. I think you can still get these light bulbs. They're good for some things because they produce heat. So you need to get the old fashioned filament light bulbs. Okay, so uh, here's a diagram of what it's going to look like. You have these two light bulbs in parallel, so you could have, you could unplug one light bulb or unplug the other light bulb or put them both in. The light bulbs are in parallel to each other, but the whole system right here is in series with the fan. And uh, this will allow you to experiment with different light bulbs and, and t different total wattages to get the fan to go exactly the speed that you want to. So let's look about how this would look like in real life. Okay, so here is the real life device that I built. And of course, you can make this uh, more neat if you want to, where you can put it in a little box or do something to make it more neat. But I just uh, built it as simple as possible to, for demonstration purposes. And these two light bulbs are in parallel, but they're in series with the total circuit. The, the fan is going to go pl get plugged in here. This is going to go into the AC right here. This right here is going to go into the AC. The fan is going to go into here. And the current is going to go around into the fan, back out through the light bulbs, and back out the other side of the, of the plug. So uh, this is the real life unit that I'm going to use to experiment with. So let's go to my workshop and see how it all works. OK, so here is the resistive circuit that I just showed in the previous picture. Here it is in real life. You can see it's plugged into the AC current over here. And the current is going to go through here, through the two light bulbs, and then through the fan. The fan would normally be plugged in over here. But I want to demonstrate that these are really parallel light bulbs. So I'm going to plug in this short-circuited uh, plug right here. I'm going to plug it in where the fan would normally go. And we're going to see that the two light bulbs go on. Now I can turn one light bulb off, or I can turn the other light bulb off, or I can have them both on. This proves that it's a parallel circuit. This circuit is parallel, but the whole thing is in series with the fan which is normally going to be plugged in right over here. Okay, so here I want to show you how many watts the fan uses on low speed when there's no resistive circuit. So I have the fan plugged in with this amp meter. And you can see that without any resistive circuit, when the fan is on low speed, it's using up 0.218 amps. 0.218 amps. So 0.218 
218 amps times 220 volts. So this fan is using this many watts. Okay, so um, 0.218 amps times 220 volts is 48 watts. That's how many watts the fan uses without any resistive circuit. That's one of the Ohm's law equations. Amps times volts equals watts, 48 watts. Okay, so here is my setup where I'm going to demonstrate how to make the fan quiet. Over here I have my AC current, and here I have an amp meter so I can see how many amps are being used up. I have my resistive circuit plugged into the AC current, and I have my fan plugged into the resistive circuit. Right now the fan is off because there's no light bulbs plugged in, so there's no current running through the system. So here I have a plate full of light bulbs. I have two 60s, 240, and a 25 watt light bulb. I'm going to start plugging light bulbs into this circuit and seeing when I get the perfect speed. So let's just try starting out with just a 25 watt light bulb. Now I want to point out one more thing. The lower the wattage that I have plugged in, the more resistance there is, the slower the fan will go. The more wattage that I have plugged in, the less resistance, the faster the fan will go. So here I have just a very low wattage plugged in, 25 watts. Let's see what happens. So you can see it's working with 25 watts, but it's very, very slow and there's no breeze at all. So clearly 25 watts is too little. Okay, let's try 260s. That's the other extreme. So if I plug in 260s, now my fan is going too fast. It's almost like there's no resistive circuit at all. Okay, so let's try something in between. Let's try 240s. So as you can see with 240s, it's just a small glow in the light bulb because not too much current is going through the light bulb and the fan is now going at a perfect speed it's producing a little bit of a breeze but it's very quiet and the current is being split up between the fan and the two light bulbs so in real life of course you're going to want to hide the two light bulbs or put them somewhere where it can't be seen or cover them over but this is just demonstrating how you do it okay now there's one last thing i want to point out and that is the total wattage being used by the system so if we focus in on the amperage being used, it says it's 0 0.172 amps. That's the total amperage using in the whole, the whole system is being used up. That amperage is being split between this light bulb, this light bulb, and the fan. But yet the total amperage is only 0 0.172. So the total wattage is 220 volts times 0 0.172 amps, which is this figure here. Okay, so now we're only using up 38 watts. 0 0.172 amps times 220 volts equals 38 watts. That means the total system is using up 38 watts. Those 38 watts are split between the two light bulbs and the fan. So the fan itself is using less than 38 watts, but the total system is 38 watts. You might feel the light bulbs and say to yourself, gee, it's wasting some heat. The light bulbs are warm, but the actual amount of heat that is put out by the total system is less because the amount of heat that's put out is directly proportional to the watts and the watts is only 38 so it's less power less heat put out by this system with the two light bulbs than by the fan with no resistive circuit at all okay well that's the end of my video and uh, i hope at least one person in this world tries this and has success then the video will be worth it Okay, that's all for now. Larry Elterman, signing off. Have a good day.